China just unveiled a nuclear cargo ship design that has Washington worried. It is a 400-meter container ship powered by a thorium molten salt reactor, a system that could let it sail for years without refueling. Chinese engineers have already released the technical specs. A 200-megawatt thermal reactor, a sealed 10-year module, and enough power to move 14,000 containers across the world with no fuel stops. If this works, it could cut shipping costs and reshape who controls global trade routes. And that is why the US is paying attention. China did not jump ahead by luck. It has spent years building this reactor program, from its molten salt test site in the Gobi Desert to its first thorium fuel cycle results in 2025. Now it is pushing that tech onto the open ocean. The question is simple. Why does this ship matter so much? And why is Washington treating it as a warning? To see the full picture, we need to look at how China reached this point and what this ship could change next. China's announcement did not come as a glossy promo. It came through technical papers and engineering notes released in early November 2025, where Jiangnan Shipbuilding finally revealed the full layout of a nuclear-powered container ship. The design outlines a 14,000 TU vessel driven by a 200-megawatt thermal thorium molten salt reactor. It is the first time any country has presented a complete plan for a commercial ship using this type of reactor. And that alone pushed US analysts into high alert. The shock was not about the ship's size. The world already has cargo giants close to 400 meters long. The problem was the fuel. A molten salt reactor that runs on thorium is something Washington once explored but never brought to life. China, on the other hand, has been refining this system since 2011, and it now claims it can package the entire reactor into a sealed module that lasts 10 years before swap out. If that happens, the old berries that killed nuclear merchant ships in the past begin to fall. And here is where tension rises. A ship that does not refuel for years does not depend on global fuel ports, oil prices, or shipping lanes tied to energy choke points. That would give China a real edge in long-distance freight, an area the US no longer dominates. So before anyone even debates safety or politics, this design already challenges the balance of power at sea. To understand why this reactor matters, we need to look at how it works and why China chose this exact technology. The heart of this ship is a thorium molten salt reactor, a design very different from the pressurized water reactors used in submarines or icebreakers. Instead of solid fuel rods, the fuel is mixed into a molten salt that flows through the reactor core. This salt runs at high temperature but at normal pressure, which removes the need for a massive pressure vessel. That alone makes the machinery smaller and lighter than older nuclear ship designs. Inside the reactor, thorium absorbs a neutron and turns into uranium-233, a fissile material that drives the chain reaction. China proved this process in 2025 at its TMSRLF-1 test reactor in the Gobi Desert. This was the first confirmed thorium to uranium conversion in a working molten salt system anywhere in the world, and it gave China confidence to scale the design toward a marine reactor. The ship uses a supercritical CO2 Brayton cycle to turn heat into electricity. This cycle can reach close to 50% efficiency, far higher than many older nuclear systems. The result is roughly 50 megawatts of electrical output, enough to push a loaded mega carrier across the ocean at steady speed. A backup diesel generator provides 10 megawatts for port operations or emergency use. Safety is built around passive behavior. If temperatures rise, reactivity drops. If something fails, a frozen salt plug melts and drains fuel into tanks where it cools into a solid mass. Unlike a steam-based nuclear system, there is no high-pressure water that can flash into explosive steam. But this is where Washington sees the deeper issue. This is not just a reactor for a single ship. It is a technology platform China can repeat, export, and scale. Next, we look at why this ship model threatens US shipping more than any vessel China has built before. The moment the specs became public, US analysts focused on one thing. If China can operate a ship that never needs fuel stops, the economics of global trade shift in China's favor. Conventional mega carries burn more than 100 tons of fuel per day, and fuel can make up half of total operating costs. Remove that cost, and you gain an edge big enough to push competitors out of long routes. A thorium-powered ship does not wait for bunkering, does not rely on oil supply chains, and does not face the fuel price swings that hit Western shipping lines every year. China controls almost 40% of global shipbuilding. Now it aims to pair that capacity with reactors built at home and fueled by domestic thorium reserves. This gives China a supply chain the US cannot match. But the threat runs deeper. China is not only a shipbuilder. It has invested in ports across Asia, 
Africa, Europe, and the Middle East through its Belt and Road program. A fleet that does not need fuel can pick routes based on speed and cost, not on port access for refueling. That lets China shift cargo flows away from Western-controlled hubs and toward ports where it has influence. For Washington, this is not a simple engineering breakthrough. It is a direct challenge to how global shipping has worked for decades. Control the ships and you shape the lanes. Control the lanes and you gain leverage far beyond the cargo on board. Next, we turn to the part that splits exports. Is this ship a safe step forward or a nuclear risk the US cannot ignore? When the design became public, China highlighted one thing right away. A molten salt reactor does not behave like the naval reactors people usually imagine. There is no high pressure water, no giant steam loop, and far lower risk of a sudden vessel failure. If temperatures rise, reactivity naturally drops. And in a serious fault, a frozen plug melts and the fuel drains into tanks where it cools into a stable solid. These features are real, and they are part of why China believes a thorium reactor can work at sea. The molten salt itself traps most radioactive elements, which limits what can escape if the system is damaged. This is very different from older nuclear merchant ships like the NS Savannah or Germany's Otto Hahn, which used pressure-based designs that required heavy shielding and faced tight port restrictions. But the US concern is not only about failure, it is also about the fuel. Thorium itself is not fissile, but the reactor produces uranium-233, which is a weapons-usable isotope. That does not mean the ship is a military platform, but it raises questions about inspections, safeguards, and who oversees these vessels if they spread globally. Ports may also push back. Many cities already hesitate to host nuclear-powered ships, even with safer designs. Insurance firms are cautious too, and past nuclear merchant ships struggled with these exact issues. If China wants a fleet, it must face those same challenges. Still, none of these concerns erase the fact that China is pushing forward. And that brings us to a deeper question. Why is the US reacting instead of leading? Now we must look at how China moved ahead while the US stepped back. To understand why Washington is reacting rather than leading, you have to go back several decades. The US once explored molten salt reactors in the 1960s at Oak Ridge, and the results were promising. The reactor ran well, and the thorium cycle showed real potential. But funding shifted to other projects, and the program ended before it reached commercial scale. The idea sat in archives while the US focused on pressurized water reactors for submarines and power plants. China took the opposite path. In 2011, it launched a national molten salt reactor program under the Chinese Academy of Sciences. By 2018, construction began on the TMSR LF-1 test reactor in the Gobi Desert, and by 2023 it achieved first criticality. One year later, thorium was added to the system, and in 2025 China confirmed successful thorium to uranium conversion in steady operation. No other nation has reached that milestone. This gave China a working blueprint, a test reactor for fuel research, and now a full-scale marine design using the same principles. While the US debated nuclear shipping rules, China built the technology and prepared to deploy it. This gap is what worries Washington. China is not just exploring an old concept. It is establishing a lead in a field the US walked away from. And if China reaches open water with this system first, the advantage does not stop at shipping. It connects to energy, trade, and global influence. Next, we move into the wider impact. What does this ship change for the rest of the world? If China manages to bring this thorium-powered ship into service, the effects reach far beyond the vessel itself. Shipping is the backbone of world trade. Close to 80% of global goods move by sea, and large container ships burn vast amounts of fuel every day. That fuel is expensive, polluting, and tied to supply chains that are vulnerable to price swings and political pressure. A ship that sidesteps all of that becomes a serious disruptor. Even a small fleet of nuclear cargo ships could tilt the economics of long routes. They would sail at steady speed, avoid refueling delays, and operate with lower running costs. In an industry where 5% cost advantage can move market share, a much larger gap would put pressure on Western shipping lines that already struggle with high operating expenses. There is also the climate angle. Global shipping emits close to 3% of worldwide CO2 each year. Nuclear propulsion would cut those emissions to near zero during operation. If even 10% of cargo volume shifted to reactors like this, the reduction would match the yearly emissions of millions of cars. That gives China a strong message in climate discussions at a time when the US and Europe are pushing stricter regulations. And then there is influence. 
If China builds the first working thorium reactor ships, it can export the technology, shape new rules for nuclear ports, and position itself as the main supplier of next-generation maritime power systems. This is not just about moving containers. It is about setting the standard the rest of the world must follow. Now we reach the turning point. What is the worst-case scenario for Washington? This is where the concern in Washington turns into real pressure. If China succeeds in building even one operational thorium reactor ship, it gains a foothold in a field where the U.S. has no active program. That alone creates a gap that will take years to close. But the worst-case scenario is not a single ship. It is a fleet. A fleet that can sail for years without fuel stops would reshape global routes. China could run direct lines between its Belt and Road ports without relying on the oil supply chain that keeps most of the world moving. Major hubs controlled by Western partners would lose traffic as cargo shifts toward ports where China holds influence. Over time, trade lanes could bend away from US-aligned regions and toward networks built by Beijing. There is also the technology race. Once China proves this system at sea, it can scale it, export it, or license it. Countries that want low-cost shipping will not wait for the US to catch up. They will buy what works. And if China sets the safety standards, reactor rules, and port protocols first, those rules will shape the global market. The US maritime sector is not prepared for that shift. It has no competing reactor program, no commercial shipyards ready to convert designs, and no plan for nuclear cargo lanes. Washington knows that falling behind here is not a temporary setback. It is the start of a long disadvantage. Now the question becomes harder. What does the world look like if China ends up leading both the ships and the rules that govern them? At this point, the concern in Washington is not about a shipyard blueprint. It is about momentum. China has moved step by step from a small molten salt test reactor in the Gobi Desert to a working thorium fuel cycle and now a complete design for a long-range nuclear cargo ship. None of this is theory anymore. It is a program with progress markers that no other nation has matched. The U.S. response, so far, is divided. Some experts argue that nuclear shipping is too complex to scale and that China will face the same insurance and port access problems that killed past nuclear merchant ships. Others see something different. They see a country willing to push a new reactor into a global market that is under pressure to cut emissions and cut costs at the same time. In that environment, a system that solves both problems will find customers. My view is simple. Even if China's first ship faces delays, the direction is clear. This reactor is not a one-off experiment. It is a platform China can refine and repeat. And while the US has the technical ability to build something similar, it lacks a program that moves at the same pace. That gap matters. If China reaches open water first, it sets the tone for what comes next. And what comes next could reshape both trade and power at sea. So here's the real question. If China launches a ship that can cross oceans for years without refueling, what does that mean for the future of US shipping and naval strategy? This is not just about trade lanes anymore. A country that controls the next wave of nuclear propulsion could shape how goods move, how ports operate, and how sea power is measured. And if China is already ahead, what will the world look like once the first thorium fleet leaves port?